Multiple sclerosis by Andrea Gamis. What is multiple sclerosis or MS? It is an autoimmune disorder that has effects on the central nervous system in which the myelin sheets that surround the axon become damaged, otherwise known as demyelination. And it slows down or even blocks the action potentials or messages sent down the axon. A quick overview of what myelin is. It's very important. What it does is it creates a layer of phospholipids, otherwise known as a fatty layer, around your axon, which allows it to insulate the axon and increase the speed in which impulses are conducted. It increases the speed of your action potential or otherwise how fast your neurons can send information down an axon. Let's talk about plaques or evidence of multiple sclerosis. They are lesions that result from inflammation that is caused by your immune system attacking the myelin. Um, these plaques are typically found in the white matter of the brain, the spinal cord, the optic nerve which relays visual information from the eye to the brain. Now, the severity or the symptoms of MS are dependent on where the plaques are located and how big they are. In this next quick little animation that I'm about to show, we see an example of demyelination of the axons, which is a characteristic of MS. What happens is that voltage-gated potassium channels are exposed to constant leakage of potassium ions from the nerve cells, and this causes a resting membrane potential to move towards a more negative value, and therefore it is difficult for it to reach a threshold value that is necessary to begin the conduction of the action potentials. As you can see here in this animation, when demyelination occurs, the message is distorted because the myelin sheet is destroyed. Let's talk about who is affected by multiple sclerosis. Approximately 350,000 individuals in the United States and 2.5 million individuals worldwide are affected. Let's look at differences in multiple sclerosis in women versus men. Multiple sclerosis is about three times more common in women than, in, than it is in men. It is also found that the onset happens a little later in men than it does in women. There are approximately 10% of cases that begin before the age of 18 and a small percentage of cases that begin before the age of 10 years old. Now, there are different types of multiple sclerosis. Up to 85% of newly diagnosed multiple sclerosis patients have what we call relapsing remitting MS. This disease is characterized by attacks which lead to neurological deficits. These attacks are also known as relapses or flare-ups in which symptoms of MS become apparent and can become worse. However, there can be complete or partial recovery um, and go into a state of what they call remission. In relapsing remitting MS, there is no apparent progression of the disease. However, there is a second type called secondary progressive multiple sclerosis, in which there is an apparent rate of progression which can vary over time. There can be improvements, there can be downs. However, there is no distinct relapses or remissions like there is in relapsing remitting MS. Third type of multiple sclerosis is called primary progressive MS. It is characterized by steadily worsening neurological function from the very beginning, and it only affects about 10% of people who are diagnosed with MS. The fourth and the least common type of multiple sclerosis is called progressive relapsing MS. In this fourth type of multiple sclerosis, there is definitely a steady progression of the disease from the very beginning with occasional flare-ups or attacks in the progression of the disease. People with this form of multiple sclerosis can experience some recovery from the neurological deficits that come up about from these attacks, but the disease does continue to progress without remission.
There are a variety of symptoms that are presented in multiple sclerosis, which can range in severity. Like stated before, these are going to be dependent on the location and the extent of the plaques. One of the most common symptoms presented and described by patients is weakness in their extremities, feeling extreme heaviness and stiffness to the point that they feel like they're giving away under their weight. This along with numbness, pins and needles sensation, pain, tingling, and burning. You can imagine how the physical spasms, weakness to the extremities, and how these can really dampen and get in the way of physical activity, so lifestyle potentially, dra potentially and drastically changes for multiple sclerosis patients. Another common symptom is called meat sign, in which electrical or painful shocks run through the body when the patient moves their neck forward. There is also mental and physical that can be due to the demyelination of the axons. Remember, like stated before, that this demyelination reduces the speed at which action potentials are conducted, meaning that these messages that are being sent on the axon are being either slowed down or completely stopped. So therefore, there is constant mental fatigue because these messages are not being sent out. There is also notice cognitive impairment as a result of multiple sclerosis, which you can imagine can lead to secondary effects such as depression, sleep disorders, and disability. In the longitudinal study uh, looking for cognitive dysfunction in multiple sclerosis, it was found that about 30 to 70 percent of people who have multiple sclerosis do present some form of cognitive dysfunction. In this study, cognitive dysfunction was defined as slowing of attention, recent memory, information processing, executing functions, verbal intellectual ability, and visual spatial perception. In this study, it was found that lesions to the temporal, occipital, and frontal lobes as well as cortical atrophy which is the degeneration or dying of nerve cells this was all correlated to cognitive impairment in multiple sclerosis patients it was found that there was greater cognitive impairment present in patients that had chronic progressive multiple sclerosis or secondary progressive multiple sclerosis as opposed to relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis. Now, one of the biggest conclusions formed by this study was that there is a correlation or a strong relation between the total cerebral lesion burden and cognitive dysfunction. Now, let's continue on with the symptoms. There are personality changes that occur, that occur irritability and frequency along with depression which is very common. Uh, it's common in about 20 to 40 percent of people with multiple sclerosis and it's not too surprising as you can imagine that this is a response due to the devastating impact that multiple sclerosis can have on one's life and family members. There are other psychiatric disorders which can be possible such as bipolar disorder, euphoria, and anxiety. Like stated before, there is extreme weakness in the extremities, there is visual loss, pain upon eye movement, and dark patches presented in the visual field. Another really severe symptom of multiple sclerosis is transverse myelitis, which is an inflammation of the spinal cord which can result uh, with the loss of the spinal cord function for up to several weeks. Optic neuritis, most will suffer from this at one point and throughout the course of the disease. There is visual blurring due to altered temperature, emotional events, or exercise. A lot of patients uh, find that they have bowel and bladder dysfunction. Uh, this could be due to low quality of, of life. Also, there is sexual dysfunction, which, which is common due to multiple sclerosis damaging the nerve pathways that are responsible for sexual response, including arousals and orgasms. These can be directly affected. Sexual problems, though, can also arise from symptoms such as fatigue, cramped or spastic muscles, and psychological factors related to lower self-esteem or depression. 
There are several treatment options available for MS today that may reduce the onset or severity of the attack. However, due to the fact that the illness is so much a mystery, there is no cure. However, steroids can be used to reduce the frequency and severity of the attacks. Avoiding heat and excessive activity can help eliminate the fatigue. And there are different categories of treatment. You can treat the attacks with steroids, like mentioned above. You can use treatment such as disease-modifying agents that will help reduce the activity and the progression that will cause a disability. And you can treat the symptoms of multiple sclerosis. For example, pain is often treated with anticonvulsants or antidepressants, and bladder dysfunction can be treated using fluid destriction or urodynamic testing. Let's talk about disease-modifying agents as a form of treatment. The most common disease-modifying agent for multiple sclerosis is known as beta interferon drugs, which regulate immune cells and suppress the inflammatory reactions of the disease. What it does is that it develops antibodies that decrease the frequency and severity of relapses by almost one-third. In a large-scale trial European study, it was found that the number of new or enlarging lesions is also decreased by beta interferon drugs. This was extended in observation by patients of secondary progressive type MS in which the progression of the disease was delayed for 9 to 12 months. One of the biggest questions today is, is there a genetic component to MS? Um, However, the genetic component may be possible with 15 to 20 percent of MS patients reporting a family history of the disease and highest concordance of MS found in monozygotic twins with about 20 to 35 percent. A lot of research being conducted um, as to the genetic basis of multiple sclerosis, the causes, and how it is that it can be cured. Um, one of the newest drugs that came about um, is known as pamperdine. And it is the first licensed drug to improve walking ability in adult patients with all types of multiple sclerosis. This is going to help restore some function and it's going to make a real difference in the quality of life for a large number of people with multiple sclerosis. What it does is it blocks potassium channels. Remember, like I said, um, there is constant leakage of potassium ions that are going in and blocking the action potential, making it too negative to go on. And this blocking ability improves the conduction of the nerve cells and the nerve fibers whose insulating myelin coating has been damaged by multiple sclerosis. Now, in this study, they looked for the impact of vampardine on walking, arm and hand function, fatigue, cognitive function, and mood quality of life among responders. responders. They looked at 30 patients with different types of multiple sclerosis and they administered the drug twice daily um, in which they were then asked to perform a 20-foot walk and a two-minute walk test and an arm function and cognitive function test along with a paste and auditory serial addition test. What they found was that there was a 56.7% average improvement in the 25-foot walk test and a longer distance in the two-minute walk test, which persisted after 28 days of treatment. Patients also showed significant improvement in the arm and hand function test, but there was no statistically significant improvement in the cognitive function test. The reason we believe that Fapardine works is because it has the ability to cross the blood-brain barrier. And what it does is it binds to the potassium channels and it stops the efflux of potassium ions. Therefore, the membrane potential is not at a negative value. And because it's not at a negative value, it can reach its threshold value and start firing or conducting the action potential. Like I've mentioned before, there is no cure to multiple sclerosis, but there are so many people out there that are really trying to figure out what is causing this disease and what we can do to stop it. So investigators are trying to develop ways to help. 
brain cells called oligodendrocytes to produce new myelin in order to straighten, strengthen or repair damaged cells of the brain and the spinal cord. Therefore, there is a lot of research going into enhancing remyelination. In a study by Dr. Trapp and some colleagues, they examined brain tissue uh, of, during autopsies of 10 patients with MS to see if new myelin-producing cells were being were being produced in these lesions. However, in most cases, they did find that oligodendrocytes were being produced around these damaged axons, but they were not repaired. This does, however, show that the brain is attempting to repair itself, and researchers are just trying to find ways to enhance this remyelination to occur. What we do know is that the brain is a beautiful thing, and that there is a window of opportunity here and there is hope for a cure for MS. Soon enough, they will find it.